Hello friends, you're with a Lonesome Gamer and today I'm still playing 2038. Now, I would say we kind of entered the stage of the end game now uh, during the last operating round. To me this is always the... I mean that is just kind of a, of a personal idea, right, that maybe derives from my from my chess uh, experience, but I always have the feeling that, I mean, in chess it is clearly you have this opening, the, the mid game and the end game, you know, and uh, the feeling uh, during these game phases changes very much. And I also have a feeling this applies in a way to 18xx games. Uh, for me, the opening is basically um, as long as the lowest value trains run. Okay, that is that is basically for me the opening phase that ends when the first trains are rusted, and then you got this mid phase, and to me the end game starts when basically all the non permanent trains are gone. And what you got in between is basically uh, your your mid game. I mean, for what it's worth, but I think it kind of the 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 way the game develops. I think that also changes in eighteen xx in these three states of the game. Now at that point, nobody has to be afraid of any rusting events anymore. I mean, these two suckers, they are still out of a company, right? Because basically the, uh, the rusting or the first six train was purchased by the end of the last operating round. But they have a bunch of money. These guys are more or less fine. He is in trouble. There is no doubt the owner of the OPC, he has to, he has to buy a lot of, uh, he has to pay a lot of money out of his own pocket. And, uh, that's going to be very painful for him. But in general, you know, once all these non-permanent trains are gone and uh, what I said, endgame starts, the, the dynamic changes usually a lot in the 18xx game. And these 18xx games also have a reputation for dragging on a long time in the endgame and for being pretty boring during the end game and it nearly feels like a kind of a flaw in the system or something you know and i can see that to a, to a good i mean i can i also experience that um there are people who call it pretty early and say we we kind of don't want this end game once it is basically clear who wins we don't plan on want to play it out i don't like to do that either i like playing these games out and really come to a, well, regular end, basically. But um, there is a problem, in a way, for um, during these, uh, during the end game stage. And especially this could be also an issue uh, to get uh, unexperienced players into the into the game, right? They many of them. I've I've heard that many of them kind of enjoy the first phases, and so. But then, when uh, when only the permanent trains are operating, they are just okay, man. This is just not interesting anymore. The interesting decisions are all made. So why should I continue playing? Well, I still enjoy it, but I can understand that people. Uh, you have these feelings. So if you ask yourself why should I still watch, uh, feel free to not to do so. Um, but uh, yeah, there might be not too many interesting decisions, but anyway, we come now to the second operating round here. And uh, of course we start again here with the RU. And the RU is sitting now on a four ship, a six five ship basically and well I mean one thing is also sure many companies kind of have their 
route now, okay? And they they don't have really the money to improve the route. I mean, these guys could lay a few more claims if they want to. But because they only can carry five goods and they definitely don't have the money to improve the ship, except if they would swallow a few times or for, swallow half or something. But uh, considering the fact that there will be not that many operating rounds left, at least that's what I think, I think that's not worth doing. So therefore, um, I have a ship that can carry five goods. I have here five claims. So that's basically what it comes down to, right? I'm going to make that route carry. I mean, we got uh, six, five. So it's one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, five. Then we go to the refuel station. And from there, we go this way, grab the last Wait, maybe that's not even necessary. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we have to. We have to refuel here and then go and deliver the ice there. As I said, we might consider laying a, placing a few claims there because we can do that for free just to piss other people off. But apart from that, there is basically nothing I can do. I'm going to run my route, pay out, and that's it. Okay, so I got a 310 run if I grab all the claims. What I could do is I could go one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm wondering if I can somehow explore here, but I think actually I can't. Not if I want to grab the ice. I mean, I could hope to find an ice like this or so that would give me then 10 more bucks basically, right? But uh, I think it's not worth it now say, okay, I leave the eyes and gamble here. Maybe I can find something of interest. And I think this is stupid. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, I take what I have here and that is uh, that I have, yeah, that I know I can get. And that is 310. That's my run. That's a good run. Obviously, I pay out. That also means that the company will have a good share value of... Uh, they they basically get here uh, 33 bucks per share when the share value rises and that will even increase more during the game so um basically the rise of the share value is at that point more valuable than the revenue for a share. We get 31 for revenue, but we get 33 right now um, for a rise in share value, and that will become even more in the next one. It's, uh, for example, it's already something like 37 or so. So, yeah, that's uh, that is definitely pretty awesome, and uh, yeah. So next it's the Asteroid League and well their situation is a little bit different. They have, they kind of have room for expansion because they have a way to get money into the company without swallowing because there are still three Asteroid League shares in the Growth Corporation share box. So if they pay out now these will be at 170 per share. That gives them 510, right? In addition to that, they will get 30% uh, of the run, which might be another 100 or so. So they're going to get 610 bucks out of this. In addition to that, they already have uh, 100 in here. So that's going to be enough then to upgrade the ship into a 9-7 ship and that might then also allow them to for example do some uh, to do some uh, gosh let me tell you what I, some kind of eh what do I want to say to do some exploration 
and maybe they find something of interest, another interesting ice or something that they can deliver here, right? For the moment, they can also only carry five goods. They have only four claims up here. So what they're going to do is they will, in addition to that, they're going to deliver the rares here for 10 bucks. Well, and actually, you know what? I'm considering going to the transwarp or not transwarp point <laughs> to the whatever to that base. Let me see if I start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm gonna go to that base. I think that makes actually more sense. Um, because I only have a single ice, that would give me 20 additional bucks. Uh, but overall I would basically only get um, uh, 40 if I deliver here. But if I deliver here, I get 60 out of it. So that's worth more. So we're gonna do that. And, uh, but I might consider, for example, laying claim on this rare here. We'll see. So, I'm... The thing is, I'm sitting now here on 200 bucks. 200 something. Now, if... Um, If I sell these guys, I'm at 500, I, I get them, basically I make 510, they paid out, right? So this goes up here to 170. So these guys bring me 510, it means I'm sitting then on, this is 700, 10, 20, 30, 55, 56. So the problem is, if I would lay a claim now, I would not be able to buy myself a ship in the next round or to, to improve that ship in the next round without swallowing at least half. So that is basically the, the decision now. Is it worth buying another ship or, or improving that ship and... It will only be worth doing so when I'm when I swallow half, because then I can lay the additional claims and all that stuff. And uh, otherwise, it just doesn't make any sense. Another problem is that this guy from the RU can simply steal away the claims here or the. The good spaces here, for example, the rarity, uh, the, the rare materials, and all that. So I will probably even lose a little more from my runs um, if I'm not placing a claim now here. But if I would place a claim now there, as I said, I would not be able to buy a ship without swallowing half. So, do I want to swallow half? I mean, basically the idea is, okay, if I swallow half, I'm going to lose one space. I think there will be, after this operating round, four more operating rounds, okay? So, if I would not swallow half, I would be at, I would be at basically one, two, three, four. I would sit somewhere here. So, that means I'm going to lose, if I would be here instead of here, I'm basically losing uh, 24 bucks per share. Okay. In addition, if I swallow, I lose, up, or if I swallow half, I lose half a run. Now I make 300 bucks. So let's say I lose half of that. So to make it easy, I would basically lose 40 bucks per share, right? I mean, I lose 15 uh, plus the 24. So it's 39, let's say it's 40 per share that I'm going to lose when I, um, when I swallow half. What will I gain? How long will it take me to, to regain that money? Now, basically what I would gain is I would gain an additional... 
uh, capacity of two goods. Um, let's say each good is about 60, right? If we're, if we're doing good, it's maybe 60. I mean, if we're super lucky, it might be 70, but let's say it's 60. So I basically get 12 per share in addition per round. Okay, so after four operating rounds, I'd be at 48 additional bucks per share. And we said I would lose 40 per share if I swallow. So overall, I think it will give me, uh, it could be a profitable thing to do. I think you really should calculate these things. Sometimes it's really hard because you you think I oh cool I want that that fancy looking train and it helps me a lot, you know, and it's great and I want to do that. But then if you really and you start swallowing maybe even twice or so, but then if you really break down the numbers you really you, you realize ah it's not such a big deal. But in this case I think it's worth it. It's close, but I think it's actually a good idea especially because as I said if I don't place, if I don't claim stuff here, um, then probably the RU will simply lay their free claims on spaces that I might otherwise use. So I will get back 60 bucks. I'm gonna lay a claim here on that rare thing and uh, Yeah, cool. So, um, next time then I can swallow half and buy myself, or and then I can upgrade my ship. But first, of course, these shares have to be sold. Well, technically, I might have been wrong about that. <laughs> Maybe I actually shouldn't do it. That's kind of interesting. Let me let me think this through once again because I probably will not have four additional operating rounds, but only three. Because the ship will not run in the next turn, it will start running in the turn after that. That is kind of questionable. Okay, let me see. Um, well, I can still decide it basically later because I don't have to make the decision of swallowing or not right now. If I don't swallow, I might be able to buy an additional ship, but that ship doesn't do me a lot of good if I, um, if I don't lay any claims. So I think laying that claim is not a bad thing anyway. The, the question is probably the decision, is it worth swallowing to get a better ship or or should we just run that ship for three more operating rounds and that's it? Well, I just calculated this. I think it's still worth it because if we go just three spaces high, the difference is also not that big. So it's one, two, three. The difference here is only about 20 bucks. Um, then uh, we said we lose 15 bucks from swallowing half. So it's basically 35 per share that we lose. If we buy ourselves a new ship, we said we gain 12 per share, so after three operating rounds, we'd be at 36. And hey, maybe we can actually find something more interesting to deliver, so we might even be able to make more money. Mining Robotics is also in a similar situation. They have five uh, cargo slots, so basically what they want to deliver is, well... I think it does not really matter. They probably want to deliver these two here. So if they go from here, one, two, three, four, grab the rares, which are good for 70, five, refuel, and then they can go here to the transshipment point 
and grab, I don't know, the ice, for example, or something. So that is just fine for them. Um, that is a run of uh, 120, 190. Uh, 250, 320, if I'm not mistaken, right? 120, 190, 250. Yeah, so that's 320. And I mean, it's not, you know, you can see here, they are all pretty much in the same range. Compared to other games of the 18xx series, it's not such a big surprise. There are not these um, these rich cities, like for example New York in in uh, in 1830, where you can make clearly more money than other areas of the board. Here, it's pretty much everywhere the same, and. Uh, I mean, if you are lucky and you got a, not exactly lucky, but if you have a, a good configuration and, for example, I could assume that the Lunar Enterprises, they will make more money simply because they have all these nickel claims and uh, they get a bonus on nickel. So if you kind of manage to do that, um, that you can combine your, uh, your bonus with your claims and so then you might end up at the end of the game in a position where you actually earn more money than other companies like for example these guys here they don't have a bonus of a, for anything the same with mining robotics and the same with the asteroid league they have other bonuses but not a bonus on specific resources so i guess that the companies one uh, with the with the specific resources once they are developed they simply will make more money than uh, than other companies, and I think that can be actually significantly more. For example, Luna Enterprises, if they're going to make their run, they get a plus 10 here and a plus 10 here, so that is basically a plus 20 per good. So, um, yeah, let's, let's assume they have the same ship, uh, or they would have the same ship as these guys, they would simply make 100 bucks in addition just for these specific modifiers. TSI is going to go, they have also a 6-5 ship, so they're going to grab these four, stop here, and then deliver this stuff here in that transshipment point. The other option would be to deliver here where the nickel is delivered. Uh, problem is... I mean, I might consider grabbing the ice here if I can get there. Maybe even the ice here. Let's see. Uh, maybe I make more money that way. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So that means I have one fuel left and get three more. And then I could go one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's pretty good. So the ice is clearly better than this one, because here I got my plus 10 bonus. So let me see, and this way I make basically 70 for each of those. That gives me then uh, 280, plus 50 for the ice, 320, and that's it, right? Yeah, that's 320. It's not that much more, if I go here, I think I would get 310, but it's a little bit in addition, that's something. Well, obviously 28 plus 5 is 33, so it is uh, even a little more than I first thought. Uh, and yeah, we're going to pay out, so the share value rises quite a bit. And yes, not too many shares. I mean, there are only five shares out there of the TSI, and sadly, this is basically all a waste. So, well, we'll see. Maybe some people are now willing to buy shares from these guys because they make a solid run here. So now it's the OPC, and they have a problem because they don't have a ship. One, two, three, four, 
500. Okay, 600, 681. Okay, great. So to buy that guy, and by the way, there is no other version of this, right? It's, we have to buy that. 950, so we have 681. That means we got to spend 19 to go to 700. And then another 250. So it's 269. That's what we have to spend. We have about 30 bucks here. So that means overall we need uh, something like 240. And we got to get that money out of selling shares. Well, we could sell shares of the OPC as long as the presidency doesn't change. Does that make sense? I think it does. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the OPC is the, this is the company that momentarily possibly performs the worst. Um, the RU is doing really well. I mean, Mars Mining is also... The thing is, Mars Mining has a good amount of, of, uh, of claims, but the, the, value, the share value is pretty low. But still, that makes it even less interesting for me to sell it. So I got a feeling I might sell probably two or three shares of the OPC. Uh, it doesn't hurt me that much because the share value will only drop one space. I might consider selling shares of the RCC, hurting this guy a little bit. But then again, you know, I mean, the, the, the OPC doesn't make any money at the moment. They don't have any claim out there. And they also don't going to have the money to, to lay a claim, right? <laughs> because they're simply out of money after I purchased them a ship. So I think I'm going to sell three of these shares. And uh, yeah, that's okay then. Okay. Yeah, that's not cool, but... So this thing drops one space. We're gonna make... something like... Well, we got 90 bucks, so it's... would be usually 270. It's 267. I hope that's enough then. I think it is. So there we go. 950. That brings the company... a ship uh, yeah I, I, I don't <laughs> wow man I'm so hosed here this is really painful but okay um, I'm sitting now on yeah close to 30 bucks I have two crappy companies and a few shares so he's definitely, he's even doing worse than this guy is. He has at least a good company running now and uh, some interesting shares, but this is just a disaster here. It really is. I mean, it might have even been worth it to actually buy that ship back so that this guy, who has a few claims sitting there, can use the better ship, and then I might have even left a few bucks in here so that I had the money to lay claims or something. But you know, in the end, I guess it just doesn't matter. I'm, I'm totally hosed anyway. Um, of course, I couldn't pay out, which will hurt me even more. There we go. And then it's the OSR, I'm, I think it is, 89, yeah. So it's the OSR. The OSR is in a similar situation, but in the end it's a much better one because the company has much more money here. 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So that is eight hundred. One, two, three, four. That's eight hundred fifty bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Five. That's eight hundred. No, that's not. It is wrong. It is. It's actually nine hundred bucks now. So we get nine hundred ten and nine hundred thirteen. That means we only need thirty-seven bucks, and that is not a problem. There we go. Thirty-seven bucks. Don't even. I, mean, I don't have that much money left, but I, it was enough to buy these guys a spaceship. I'm not saying that is terribly useful. <laughs> It's also not a great company, and uh, yeah, I'm also in this position that I have a, a really bad company without any claims or stuff. And of course, the problem is they don't have the money to um, to to lay claims to build a good infrastructure. But you know. They helped me so that I could afford a good ship for these guys. And uh, I can maybe sell the shares down and then try to find something better or so. I might even consider... And that is something this guy might also think about to buy the better ship, I mean it's just a single, yeah, it's probably not worth it. In the end it's just a single cargo slot. For him it might be interesting, there are two cargo slots. So if he's only holding, yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't change anything. I thought maybe the better ship is more useful here, but actually he holds even more shares of that company than of the other company. So in the end, it would probably be to his disadvantage to do that. Okay, so the problem is they also didn't pay out, it means the share value drops. Now all the companies have ships, and yeah, that's uh, nobody went bankrupt. So now the LE is running, and they will make a good run. They can start up here and then grab all their six claims and deliver that here. And in addition to that, they get a plus 10 for nickel. I assume that's gonna be the best run of the, for the rest of the game for now. I don't think that we see uh, that any other companies can co really compete with that. So we're gonna get here, um, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, so that's basically five times 80, so that's 400, because each of these is worth 80 instead of 60 because of these modifiers. So that would be 400, and then we got another one here for 70, so that is 470, and as expected, that is clearly the best run until now and uh, yeah that's uh, that's a really good run it's not the best run that we've seen during the game um, but it is now a very very powerful run the guy holds 50 percent so that might give him a boost the sad thing for him is that these shares are not really um, in the upper half of the well of the of the share value basically well same situation here the guy could consider swallowing which would allow him to lay more claims right now the company has no option to improve its infrastructure so if he swallows half he could lay more claims at the moment he can grab these two nickel, he gets a plus 10 per nickel, 
and he could deliver here so he could get plus 20 per nickel however at the moment that doesn't do him that much good he's better off going here to this to this shipment point meaning that at the moment he makes a run of 340 which is really pretty good if he swallows half now he will lose 17 per share in addition i kind of calculated that in the end he would have ended up somewhere here which loses him another 20 per share by the end of the game for swallowing half so he would lose basically 37 per share um, what would i gain from that well let's imagine i could get the maximum out of my five um, slots that would then bring me to five times eight um, that would be a run of 400 to a difference of 340 so we could gain six more um, per share let's say we have uh, five more operating rounds to go that would simply mean that we would only get um, 30 more per share that is less than the 37 or what that I uh, calculated as a loss so therefore I think it's not worth swallowing here and therefore I'm simply going to continue making this run for the rest of the game I think that's the best I can do Venus Prospectors is in a funny situation here because they only have two claims on the board but they're actually having a pretty good run if they go here start in Venus here one two pick up the ice there let's do that and we're gonna need more we only have five slots right but we could go here so it's one two three four the rares five six seven then we can do a refuel and that means we then have again I, I don't know I think wait a minute let me one two three four five six seven that means I have two movement points left so if I do a refuel I'm sitting then on five movement points one two three four five so I could actually explore here which is neat I'm going to, I want to grab that ice but I'm not even sure if I want to uh, that rare I'm not even sure if I want to do that maybe I prefer to explore here a little more my goal is obviously to find better rares because these rares are shit rares I mean they're not terrible but they're definitely not great so if I manage to make you know if I deliver ice it doesn't give me that much less money than the bad rares basically I mean I get a plus 10 per rare so for one of these crappy rares I would get 50 bucks if I deliver them here but for the bad ice or for the for this medium ice I already get 40 bucks so if I'm a little lucky I could gamble a little here and say okay I take that ice for example instead of these rares have 10 bucks less but I get the chance to explore these two and maybe I find uh, something of interest here so let me just recalculate that one two three four five six seven yeah that brings me down to two refueling leaves me then with five one two three four five perfect so let's do a little bit of exploring here the first one is nickel yeah fuck and a really bad one so nobody wants that and the second one is a bad rare <laughs> yeah okay I mean that isn't too good okay mm hmm great anyway of course I'm gonna pay out and the funny thing is I actually have a pretty good run here um, if I'm not getting this wrong I'm actually making well let, let me see let me see again I make 60 bucks a hundred and 
10, 150, 170, 210. But I get 30 more per nickel, uh, per rares. So basically I'm making 300 here, which is really good considering I hold only two claims. Um, and that makes it kind of interesting that this company only has two claims because it simply doesn't need any more. Of course I'm going to pay out. The cool thing is now the company still has 40% here in the growth corporation so that means we got 120 bucks for the company and that is pretty good because that allows them to actually lay another claim without swallowing sadly it doesn't allow me to lay two claims that's a kind of a shame even with the exploration bonus I cannot quite do that but maybe in the next turn yeah in the next turn I then can lay another claim so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a shame that there are not that many great rares out there. But I think I'm not going to gamble here anymore. And I simply try to, to claim, to, yeah, to place a claim. Just be happy that with what I have. So the question is, where do I want to place that claim? Well, I think I'm going to place it here. And there we go. Okay, cool. So, uh, last company is Mars Mining. I tried to find the optimum route for them. Uh, it turned out it's not that easy. And I think in the end, um, I mean, they're... It's interesting. Okay, let's see. We we start up here, and then we're gonna. We want ice. Okay, we get a play, plus ten for ice delivery. So the thing is, if we go one, two, grab this one, three, four. It's a shame that the guy already took that one. So then we can refuel here, and that means. Uh, well, basically we already spent four we have nine that means we are at five we refuel up to eight again right one two three four yeah so we we have eight now left one two three maybe i fucked that up maybe i can even do better than i thought so the idea is one is that <laughs> Now I think it's one, two, three, four. So I spend another four. So I should be now at seven, if I'm not mistaken. And now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exactly. So the idea is then to basically grab one, two, three, four, five ice. And here in the transshipment point, the problem is I have basically one cargo slot free and there's nothing of interest left. If I would be first, I might have the option to go here, although I'm not even sure about that. Maybe not. This might be, yeah, I might not be able to do that. Uh, I don't know, but then the ice delivery here would be more interesting, maybe. Um, but in that way, because I cannot get these two ice, it, mm, it is more profitable to go here than going here. So in the end I have to come up with some crappy nickel. There is nothing of interest on the way otherwise. Everything is claimed, so the best I can get is another 20 bucks from a nickel here. So in the end it is a run of well I get plus 10 for the eyes. Let's see that's 70 
um, 130, 200, that's not a bad run actually, 260, a nickel, so that's 280, the ice here is 340, and the shipment point is uh, 410. Wow, that's a very good run. That is really a, a very, very good run. And uh, it could have been quite a bit better if not for these two suckers. Uh, one of them might go away. I'm not sure that brings me a big advantage though. <sighs> But maybe, it's, it's kind of hard. If I, let's say I go instead grabbing this guy, I might then have the option to go up here, take that one, this one, maybe even that one, and then go to the ice. That could be even more interesting. We'll find out about these things. Problem is I cannot lay any more claims. Uh, I don't have any money to operate with. And... Uh, with ice, the claims also don't give you such a massive advantage. So I simply will pay out and uh, I, I'm kind of satisfied, I guess. So we start into another stock round now. Um, We have here, well, let's do the stock round first before we, as I said, I'm assuming four more operating rounds, um, but we can go through the bank size uh, maybe when the next operating round starts, so by the end of the stock round. So first, I mean, this is one of the stock rounds. Everybody's kind of, or most people have a fairly full portfolio. Not all of them, but most of them are pretty much at the certificate limit. So it's now basically about filling up to the certificate limit, buying the one or two shares that are left. A few people aren't though. I mean, this guy is not, this guy is, well, a few, <laughs> actually about half the people are not, right? Anyway, this guy is first player. We have a certificate limit of 13. Let's see what we got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, he holds 13 certificates. However, the OSR didn't operate at all until now and they're probably not going to make that much money. Um, although they have a very good ship, I mean, that is something. But they start up here. They have zero resources to improve their infrastructure. So uh, it's going to be hard for them. They're going to probably do some... I mean, they could go down here, or they really do some exploring... Uh, maybe they actually should swallow or something, right? I mean, otherwise it's... Or swallow half at least or something so that they can lay a few claims. I don't know. They are not in a good position. I think it's it's probably a good idea to, to get rid of these shares um, if there is something better out there. Is there something better out there? Well, um, probably. I mean, let's see. Hmm. The really good money makers are right now the Luna guys. They are sold out already. Mars Mining, same thing. And uh, the RCC is actually performing pretty well. So uh, maybe we should go with that. It seems like, yeah, they are, they are not doing badly. The Trans Space Incorporated is also in a good shape. Um... So I could also invest in these guys. Seems like there are enough shares out there that do better than on-site refining. So therefore, I think I want to actually sell completely down and invest in something more interesting here. Yeah, I think I want to do that. Of course, other people could then buy the company away from me, but 
Who cares? So we sell these guys. Share value drops by one space. And that means we get 237 bucks. So what is the best investment at that point? As I already said, we can see here the LRE is sold out. Mars Mining is sold out. These are the ring construction guys. They are doing well. Uh, the share value is not quite as high though. 87. That means also the growth, the increase in share value each turn is not as good as of more valuable companies, right? So for example, if these guys rise, and if they pay out, they make about 23 bucks per share, just in share value. If these guys rise, they make about 33 bucks, which is clearly better. So, um, and therefore, I got a feeling, you know what I want to do, and I think that's really pretty cool for me. I actually want to buy a TSI share because the good thing about that is it will give me the presidency of the TSI. I have then complete control over that chip. I don't have to be afraid that someone else fucks me up. I might even consider at some point juggling ships, you know, saying, okay, who cares about one run of the USR? I mean, it's probably not worth it, but we could think about these kind of things. So I want to buy a TSI share. There's also an Asteroid League share out there, which is nice, uh, neat. The Asteroid League is definitely performing also really well, uh, but I think the presidency of a company at that point is worth more than uh, a share which performs slightly better, if it does at all, especially because it allows me to buy one additional share, right? So, therefore, I think that is a very, very good move for me. So, this guy here, he invested in the Asteroid League because he thinks it's a very, it's a pretty profitable company. They are very high up here, so the increase in share value, simply in market value, is going to be very high. And also, um, they have a lot of money sitting here, so there is room for improvement there. Um, he's in an interesting position because he holds also exactly at that point 13 certificates. Um, he holds a lot of these Mars mining certificates, which are performing pretty well. They're sitting on 41. That's uh, the performance they do now. Um, what's kind of interesting is because of their lower share value, on the other hand, they don't have such a share increase as some other companies do. What he could do, and that's, I mean, that's that demands some calculation. I, I'm not sure if I really want to max things out that much because, especially because it's pretty clear that he will not lose the game totally, but he will also not win the game. But um, he has the option, for example, in the next time on his, in his stock turn, he could start selling these Mars Mining Associates one by one, uh, basically exchanging them for high-value shares like the Asteroid League or the TSI, if there should be some out there. Because the Mars Mining shares will not lose in value if he sells them. So you could simply say, okay, I'm going to sell one of these guys and buy a TSI. Next turn, if there's still a TSI out there, for example, he could sell the next one and buy a TSI if he thinks that the TSI is more valuable because of a better share increase. But I, honestly, I don't think that is the case. I'm not totally sure about that, but I think overall it's not a big difference. 
You can also see here, by the way, you know, if it comes more to the end of the market, the it's not as steep as some other markets are. I mean, even here, pretty much at the end, the difference is about 20 to 30, right? So it's not, I mean, in some other you have, you have there already your 50 or something like that. This is not the case here. It's, 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 it's still okay. The increase is not that different to what you get down here. It is a little bit, but it's not that harsh. Now, here's this guy. And there's a little bit of a risk now in holding the TSI shares because um, there's a little bit of a chance that the TSI shares might get dumped or the TSI might get dumped on him and for example that, that, the, that the Luna Enterprises buys the ship and uh, because he holds 50% of those guys and then the TSI is dumped on him um, that would be possible of course and that is kind of a danger In a way, well, no, not exactly. I mean, I think he's going to go for another asteroid leak share for now. Just that's that's a safer way. This guy is only holding a single company, and uh, I think there are not too many people out there who are such assholes that they say, well, actually, it's not even possible. The asteroid leak is not a allowed to sell the last train. I mean, in theory, what I wanted to say is that even if a guy only holds a single company, it is still possible that you end up with a company without a train, you know? I mean, he could just to hose you. This guy, for example, could sell its train, could offer the train to somebody else for a buck or so, then sells all the shares, and then this guy is sitting on the Mars mining. That is possible. You can do these kind of things, although it doesn't help him a lot. But if it would bankrupt him and he would fight for the lead, it could be an interesting choice to do these kind of things. But, uh, well, obviously this is not the situation that we have here, so there is no real reason for him to do that. Um, okay, so as I said, I'm going to invest in the Asteroid League because I think it's a safe bet. And it is not allowed, that's a special rule, to sell or to buy the last ship of the Asteroid League. So it's 170. There we go. And we get this share here. And this guy will also invest in the Asteroid League, in his own shares. Willie. The thing is, he doesn't have that much money, <laughs> so maybe it is more reasonable to to invest in cheaper stuff. We'll see about that. Well, actually, you know what? I think I don't want to invest in the Asteroid League. The reason is, I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight certificates. So my main goal at that point is to fill my portfolio up to the certificate limit. I could buy five more shares. I don't have a lot of money. I have only 200 bucks. One, two, three, four, 300. So it's about 450. So if I buy shares, which are worth more than a uh, hundred bucks, I will not be able to to go to the to the certificate limit and the asteroid league is not operating that massively so that I could say hey that's that's really worth it I think what I'm gonna do right now is I prefer to buy shares um, from cheaper companies that perform well I uh, wonder the RCC comes to mind. Yeah, I think the RCC is a, is a good, good example here. Um, Venus could also be an option, but there are definitely enough interesting shares out there. So the RCC 
It's a par price for 88. It's sitting at 87. So yeah, I'm going to buy this guy, for example, for 87 bucks. And in this way, I can simply afford more shares. And I think at that point of the game, that helps me more than investing in more valuable shares. Now this guy is kind of a similar situation. He's also not too eager to invest in the Asteroid League, although they are doing well. But he also says, hey, I need as many shares as possible, as long as they are not total crap. And that is not the case, you know. I mean, the Asteroid League is performing pretty poor anyway. So uh, they will probably improve a little. But I think I also uh, might consider investing probably in the ring construction. They seem to do pretty well. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. I'm going to pay 88 bucks and also get a share of the ring construction then. So this guy, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. He's at the limit. Okay. Does he want to change things? I think not. Um, I mean, this company isn't performing that great. Uh, wait a minute, I think this is actually... Yeah, I think it's okay. I think this this company isn't performing that great, but he holds the presidency, and they make a solid run, and the real good companies are not available anymore. Asteroid League? Hmm. Is there a chance for him to get the presidency, for example, of the Asteroid League, which would allow him to get another share? I mean, in general, that could be an interesting choice, saying, hey, maybe I want to try to attack someone and uh, grab the presidency. But to do that, i got to sell, for example, the mining robotics, the LE, which are performing really well. Mining robotics I would sell, but hmm, I don't know. I, I don't think this is really worth it. Selling one RU could be an option, but on the other hand, that would also drive down my share value. Uh, I don't think I want to change things at that point here. So I will pass. I'm going to be the first player to pass. And now it's this guy, and he also has a few bucks here, something like 200 or so. So what is he going to do? He can also invest in probably cheap shares. Now what is out there? Um, RCC would be an option. Do I want to do that sitting right next to this guy? Well, I mean, I'm pretty much lost anyway, so if I go bankrupt, it doesn't really matter. I might consider doing that. Could also consider investing in Venus Prospectors. Kind of fun to do that. I mean, they're not performing that poorly. Uh, we have here 87. These guys are sitting at 96. Wow, that's that's crazy, man. So uh, 87 means I could actually afford... Hmm. Can I afford more shares? Let me see. So actually I'm considering if I don't, if there are still shares left later on, I think I'm going to sell that last or this single OPC share because it's just probably the worst performing company at the moment. I'm not totally sure, but in there are still other things out there. The TSI, the Venus Prospectors, uh, the, the RCC, they all perform better, at, that, at least what I, uh, that's what I assume, than the OCC. So for now, I'm going to buy a share of Ring Construction for 87 bucks. 
So we have now interesting things going on here. For example, this guy is sitting on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shares. But he hasn't did she he doesn't have the money to buy more shares. Now I'm considering actually selling shares, especially these high value shares, and uh instead then using my money to fill my portfolio. Um, first I thought, hey, that's probably not a great idea, but the thing is that if I do that, you know, a share like that will make me about, this share will make me in the next four stock rounds, the, the increase of share value will be about 200 bucks per share. If I buy cheap crap like this, it's only about 100 bucks per share after two stock rounds but I got two shares right <laughs> so it's the the stock the, the the rise of stock value is pretty much the same here um, the the interesting question is the revenue and I mean the revenue of these two new companies will definitely not be great but I think it will be good enough to they they will be good enough to create at least as much revenue as uh, as the RU does combined. That's what I mean. You know, I mean the RU is pretty low compared to the other ones, and uh, so I think it, they should be able to do that. They uh, these guys have a nine seven ship, and so um, and yeah, these guys also do. Of course, there's always a chance that. They kind of use abuse the company somehow, and and that is kind of a problem, right? So I'm not sure if I want to do that. So I think what I want to do is I'm not going to sell these shares right now. There will be another stock round, and the shit will be out there in the next stock round too. You know what I don't want is that I sell the shares now have a handful of totally crappy shares and then in the next stock round I'll have money but only shitty shares and um, all the good shares are already gone so I, I don't know you know it, it's really hard to tell because I it's not like I sit on these shares and cannot afford new shares for the rest of the game Basically, I have to live with this small portfolio for two sh operating rounds, and then I will have the money to um, to fill my portfolio to the certificate limit. So now, you know, it, it, I really could now start calculating, is it worth selling these three guys, basically, you know what I mean, or... To, to have a full portfolio right now with shitty shares or do I want to hold this smaller portfolio for one operating round and then end the game with um, um, with a full portfolio with much better shares honestly I don't know that and I'm not gonna calculate that uh, this is just too complicated I think I'm not going to do it. I think I want to hold the first player and I think I'm fine for now. Now this guy also has to make a decision. Other people bought Venus now all over the place. He's sitting here at 30% and he also only has 30% in the presidency. Um, certificate limit at that point isn't that important. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In the next turn it might be. Um, the question is, do I want to try to defend the presidency here by selling the Outer Planet Consortium? If I do that, the share value of the OPC will drop here, and underneath is the OSR. Is that a problem? Well, yes, it is, because the OS... I got a neat idea. I also hold a share of the OSR. So I might as well sell that share. I purchased that, but I could sell it again. The basic problem is 
that in a way the OPC is sitting here, the OSR is sitting here, there might be some kind of um, of competition for the good spaces, right? For example, the ice here or the ice here. So that is all. There's a rare here, you know. There is not too much left in this area, and I got a feeling both companies will probably compete for the good resources here. So it might be very important who goes first here. On the other hand, um, the Venus, Venus is clearly doing better than the other guys, I think. So here's what I want to do. I'm actually going to sell both. I'm going to sell first the OPC and then I'm going to sell the OSR. That means both will drop and they will both go um, and the, 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 the order won't change. That gives me 138 bucks and that's enough to buy me a Venus share. Overall I have a share less but I want to hold the presidency of the Venus because Venus makes a good amount of money and maybe then in the next turn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I will have the option to buy one more share because I have then uh, two presidencies. Well, actually, I sh yeah, I have then two presidencies instead of only one. So that's uh, maybe an advantage then. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This guy is full. This chance for him to buy the TSI was an amazing option and uh, I'm not sure if he's still um, if, he, if he still has the option to win the game. I always had a feeling this guy was doing very well uh, because he has probably the better share value but I think that was a very valuable action for him. And um, so he has to pass. He's also full. He passes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He still has the option to buy a last chair, but not for a lot of money. So that's 50, 60, 70, 80. He got 90 bucks left. Um, so what is he going to buy for that? Well, it's only some, basically it has to be an OSR and an OPC. I think I'm going to invest in the OPC. Um, let me see, we got 60 here, which is clearly, the funny thing is if I, if I sell that shit, no, it doesn't make any sense, no. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one here, the OPC, and yeah, that's, that's all I can do right now. But I think at that point I'm also at my certificate limit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So yeah, that could have been worse. Uh, he also still has 65, 67. That's going to be enough actually to buy. Yeah, because of these cells these shares are now less valuable, so he can also buy an OPC now. There we go, for 60 bucks. Awesome. Okay, that's it. We're done. It's the end of the stock round. First player goes here. Um, some people have to be afraid that a company gets dumped on them. This guy with the Venus, for example, or also with the TSI. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Maybe he with the resources unlimited. 
But you know, in the end, it doesn't matter for these people. They will not win anyway. And hey, they say, okay, you know, I got to I gotta buy some good shares at that moment. And I got to risk something here. So we're going to adjust the share values now. The RU is sold out. Uh, Asteroid League, that's the interesting thing. That is something nobody really expected. There are still two shares of the Asteroid League in the growth box. That is really, really interesting. So the, the, the Asteroid League is not sold out, nor is the TSI, because there is still a share in here. Nobody wanted that. Maybe that guy should have sold a RU or something, but in the end, you know, it's, it's hard to sell. This thing is sold out. Venus isn't. Mars is. The RCC is, and uh, the others are not. So yeah, it's uh, kind of interesting to see how this is spread out here. Okay, um, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, I'm going to load this up. I think the next video will then probably be the last one. We're just going to go through the remaining operating rounds. There is about... Okay, let's see, one, two, three thousand five hundred, it's about four thousand, maybe six thousand, let's say it's about six thousand and a bit. We are making, I would say, an average a company makes a little more than three thousand. So it is even possible that there is only one more set of operating rounds because you play basically to the beginning of the next stock round uh, after the bank breaks and it's going to be very very close uh, it really is it depends on how these new companies will perform I guess and uh, if they perform more than 300 or something it is possible that we don't see um, another set of operating rounds. Anyway, going to load this up now and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye.